We're glad you want to know more about KitchenAid single-serve espresso makers. Homeowners and industry professionals alike choose a KitchenAid product for the way it's made. So when repairs and maintenance are needed, know there's a quick fix that can restore performance. In this video, we'll show you what tools are needed, how to easily disassemble and reassemble a unit, and how to troubleshoot repair issues on Espresso Maker models KES0503 and 5KES0503. Required tools. Wire cutters. Small flat blade screwdriver. 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. 3 millimeter hex wrench. 5 millimeter hex wrench. Needle nose pliers. T10 Torx screwdriver. T20 Torx screwdriver. Please note that powered screwdrivers are not recommended for servicing the KitchenAid single-serve espresso maker. The following equipment will greatly assist you in servicing the KitchenAid single-serve espresso maker. Low pressure compressed air to remove debris from internal and external components, a clean shop towel or a folded paper towel to cushion the service area and keep from scratching the unit or damaging the controls, a small parts bin to keep the screws and small parts available for reassembling the unit, Disassembly and Components It's time to learn how the KES0503 and 5KES0503 come apart. This will help you feel comfortable with the basic components so you'll be able to make almost any repair. As you start disassembly, have a small bin ready for screws and dedicate an area to organize components as they come out of the unit. Start by removing all detachable parts. Check the water tank and tank valve for leaks. Remove and clean the maintenance unit. That includes the drip tray with cup support, drip grid, and capsule container. Place a few dry paper towels into the opening where the maintenance unit was removed. Also, place a cup or container underneath the drip stop as if you were going to use the espresso machine. Cycle the unit one time to evacuate any water that may still be in the unit. Next, take off the base cover and water tank support. Make sure the unit is unplugged. Turn the unit upside down on a cushioned surface and remove the cord hold down screw using the T10 Torx screwdriver. Remove any excess cord from the cord wraps on the base and position the cord in the cord channel to the rear of the unit. Remove the four base cover screws using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Remove the base cover from the base and set aside on the workbench. Remove the two screws from the cord strain relief on the water tank support using the T10 Torx screwdriver. Remove the cord from cord hold channels and pull it toward the front of the unit away from the tank support. Remove the two screws on the low pressure connector from the tank support using the T10 Torx screwdriver. Remove the black rubber tube from the flow meter by pulling it off the fitting. Remove the flow meter PCB flat ribbon cable by pulling the white connector out from the PCB. Remove the clear rubber flow meter output tube by pulling it from the fitting on the flow meter. Remove the flow meter PCB assembly from the tank support by carefully unsnapping the hooks on one side of the PCB and lifting the flow meter PCB assembly from the tank support. Remove the two screws from the tank support and remove the tank support from the metal base. Next, remove the metal base. Remove the ground screw with star washer from the base using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Remove the seven black screws securing the metal base to the plastic chassis using the T10 Torx screwdriver. Place all parts in the bin for reassembly later. Remove the four screws securing the metal base to the metal side panels using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Place all the screws into the screw bin. Lift the base from the unit feeding the power cord through the opening. Set the base aside on the workbench. Please note that there is a magnetic disc in a pocket at the rear of the slider channel on the base. It may fall out when the base is removed. 
If this happens, it can be held in place with double-sided tape when the base is inverted during reassembly. Now, remove the chassis back cover and power cord. Start by removing the two screws that secure the chassis back cover using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Remove the chassis back cover by applying light downward pressure while releasing the tabs using a small flat blade screwdriver along the edges. Unplug the green power cord ground wire by pulling it free from the ground terminal connector. Unplug the power cord wires from the main control unit by pulling them from the lugs on the circuit board. Please note that European units have blue, brown, and green yellow wires. Remove the cord from the channel in the chassis and set it aside on the workbench. Unscrew the ground wire harness from the top housing using the T20 Torx screwdriver and place the screw with the star washer into the screw bin. Unplug the ground wire harness and remove it from the cable guide channel in the chassis and set it aside on the workbench. Next, remove the lever, top housing, and chassis. Place the unit on its side on a soft surface with the lever on top and facing forward. Remove the plastic chrome lever cap by prying it out from the black plastic lever handle using the small flat blade screwdriver. Then, with the 5mm Allen hex wrench, remove the lever shaft screws and washers, black plastic handle knob, brushed metal handle arm, insulation ring, and metal spacer, and place them aside. Remove the plastic chrome handle support to expose the lever bearing block assembly. Remove the O-ring from the lever bearing block assembly. Use the 3mm hex wrench to remove the three screws holding the lever bearing block assembly to the top housing assembly. Set the bearing block assembly, including the coupling and fixing rubber, aside on the workbench. Set the unit back on its top with the rear facing the front of the workbench. Remove the trim band screw using the T10 Torx screwdriver. Place the screw in the small parts bin. Remove the four screws that secure the side panels to the top housing assembly using the T20 Torx screwdriver. There are two screws on either side panel. Remove the plastic coffee spout using a small flat blade screwdriver. Pry up between the head ring and the coffee spout at the front of the unit. Remove the two long screws that secure the metal head ring to the top housing assembly using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Lift the entire chassis unit with side panels and head ring off of the top housing assembly. Disconnect the MMI ribbon cable from the main control unit and through the opening in the chassis to complete the top housing unit removal. Now, remove the MMI assembly. Using the small flat blade screwdriver, pry the decor ring and knob ring assembly from the front of the unit. Care should be taken not to scratch the painted surface of the top cover. If they haven't already come out, the push button with the spring and button activator should also be removed at this point. Next, remove the four screws from the top housing bracket assembly using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Remove the two screws that secure the MMI body to the top housing assembly using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Remove the MMI cable from the hold downs along the inside of the top housing casting and lift the MMI unit with its cable assembly from the top housing. The MMI and ribbon cable come as an assembly and should be replaced together. Next, remove the side panels, head ring, and trim band. Upright the chassis with the side panels, head ring, and trim band on the workbench. Use the T20 Torx screwdriver to remove the four screws holding the side panels and head ring to the chassis. 
the two screws holding each of the side panels have square spacers on them. Invert the unit and remove the side panels, head ring and trim band assembly. The head ring and side panels are only held together by the trim band, so care should be taken not to bend the trim band as it will be reused when reassembling the unit. Remove the trim band from each of the side panels and the head ring by bending the trim band tabs up or down so they can be removed from the slots in the painted parts. Now, remove the drop stop and water pump. Remove the drop stop by firmly gripping it toward the rear while squeezing the sides with your thumb and forefinger, pulling it free from the chassis. The drop stop cover can now be removed by prying it up and out of the drop stop using your fingernail under the edge. Next, remove the high pressure connector between the water pump assembly and the brewing unit by cutting the wire locking clips with the diagonal cutters. Use needle nose pliers to pull the lock clip pieces from the high pressure connector and lift the connector free. Please note that once the high pressure locking clips are cut, the high pressure connector has to be replaced as the locking clips are part of the assembly and cannot be reused. Take care not to lose or damage the O-rings as they will be reused. Remove the pump isolation cover by prying it up and off the water pump, exposing the wire terminals. Disconnect the two gray pump wires from the water pump assembly. Pull the pump wires through the opening in the side of the chassis and remove them from the chassis channel. Remove the water pump assembly from the chassis by sliding the rubber pump support at the top of the pump assembly from the chassis. Do not lose the spring that is on the pump hose. Next, remove the brewing unit. Disconnect the three brew unit cables and the flow meter ribbon cable from the main control unit electronics. Remove the two screws that secure the main control unit electronics to the chassis and remove the main control unit with the pump cables attached and place it aside on the workbench. Remove the flow meter cable from the chassis channel and place it on the workbench. Remove the brew unit assembly from the chassis by releasing the four plastic chassis clips that hold it in place. Use slight pressure toward the rear of the unit to ensure the clips stay released. Remove the steam cover by releasing either the top or bottom clips that are holding it to the brew unit housing. Next, turn the gear wheel so the gear lever guides are lined up vertically. The brew unit housing should be in its maximum forward position. Remove the slider from the top of the brew unit housing assembly by releasing the two tabs at the front of the slider. Now, remove the left and right gear levers from the sides of the capsule cage. Disassemble the capsule cage from the thermal block unit by removing the two screws holding it in place. There's an O-ring and sleeve that fit onto a tube inside the thermal block assembly. Do not lose them when removing the capsule cage. They will be needed for reassembly. The only part of the maintenance unit that may require disassembly to service is the cup support. To access the cup support mounting hardware, 
remove the capsule container and drip grid from the maintenance unit. With the maintenance unit inverted, remove the drip tray by grasping the rear portion of it and pull it up. Now, with the cup support folded against the front cover, loosen the two set screws about three quarters turn each using the 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. Upright the maintenance unit and remove the cup support. If the cup support does not release, turn each of the set screws another quarter turn. If it still does not release, turn the set screws another quarter turn. Do this until the cup support can be removed from the maintenance unit. If the set screws are backed out far enough, the hinge locks may fall out of the cup support. If this happens, be sure to place them in the parts bin for reassembly. Reassembly. Snap the slider and steam cover back in place on the brewing unit housing. Make sure the O-ring and spacer are in place in the thermal block and then reattach the capsule cage to the thermal block using the two screws. Place the thermal block assembly on its side with the capsule cage to your left. Place the right gear lever back into place on the capsule cage making sure that it seats and is in full contact with the gear wheel. Rotate the right gear lever clockwise while holding the right gear lever onto the capsule cage and fully forward using the middle and forefingers of your left hand. Turn the unit over and place the left gear onto the capsule cage. Rotate the left gear clockwise until it just comes into contact with the gear wheel. Lift the left gear lever just enough to move the leading gear tooth two positions into the gear wheel. When it is positioned properly, you should not be able to rotate the gears forward such that the left gear disengages from the gear wheel and both gears should contact the stops at the front of the capsule cage at the same time. With the gear levers pushed fully forward, place the assembled thermal block into the vertical brewing unit housing channel until it stops. Push the thermal block assembly forward until it stops in the horizontal brewing unit housing channel. Place the brewing unit assembly onto the chassis and lower it into place so the tabs on the brewing unit housing line up with the channels in the chassis. With the brewing unit housing tabs in the chassis channels, push the brewing unit assembly forward until it locks into place on the four locking tabs located on the chassis. Fasten the main control unit electronics with the pump cables to the chassis using the two screws. Reconnect the three brew unit cables and the flow meter ribbon cable to the main control unit. Now, you can reassemble the drop stop and water pump. Make sure the spring is properly installed on the pump hose. Then guide the water pump assembly into the lower chassis mount. Reseat the rubber pump support into its slot in the chassis. Work the pump wires through the channel openings of the chassis and attach them to the water pump. Reattach the pump isolation cover by snapping it on the water pump over the wire terminals. Make sure the pump wires are in their proper location in the chassis wire guides. Place the small O-rings on the thermal block and water pump lines. Install the new high pressure connector over the O-rings. Make sure the high pressure connector snaps firmly into place. Now place the drop stop with the cover attached back onto the chassis by snapping it into place. Next, attach the side panels, head ring, and trim band. The head ring and side panels are only held together by the trim band. Work the trim band back into place in the head ring and side panels by inserting the trim band tabs into the slots in the painted parts. 
bend the trim band tabs over to secure the trim band to the painted parts. Place the side panels, head ring, and trim band assembly back into place on the chassis, being careful to not bend or crease the trim band. Turn the chassis with the painted parts right side up. Then, reattach the two screws with square spacers on them, holding each of the side panels to the chassis. Attach the two screws that secure the head ring to the chassis. Using the T20 Torx screwdriver, secure the MMI body to the top housing with the two screws. Route the MMI cable through the hold downs along the inside of the top housing casting. Finally, use the four screws to reattach the top housing bracket assembly to the top housing using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Place the decor ring onto the front of the MMI, making sure to line up the tab on the ring with the notch in the MMI body and snap it into place. Now, place the knob spring and the switch activator in place in the center of the MMI knob. Make sure the switch activator is oriented so that it comes into contact with the button switch on the MMI circuit board. Next, install the knob ring with the dial pointer to the top. Push it until it snaps into place. Check the jog operation of the knob ring at this point. To finish the MMI assembly, place the knob button in place with the slot toward the bottom of the unit and snap it into place. Test the action of the knob button when completed. Connect the MMI ribbon cable back to the main control unit electronics, routing it through the top of the rectangle opening in the chassis and back up to the control unit. Invert the entire chassis unit with side panels and head ring into the top housing assembly, making sure the ribbon cable is not pinched. Reattach the two long screws that secure the metal head ring to the top housing assembly using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Snap the plastic coffee spout back into place. Reattach the four screws that secure the side panels to the top housing assembly using the T20 Torx screwdriver. There are two screws on each side panel. Finally, reattach the trim band screw using the T10 Torx screwdriver. Next, the bearing block assembly should be inserted into the machine with the two shorter distance holes on top and the spacer opening toward the front of the unit. If the screw holes in the bearing block assembly do not line up with the holes in the top housing, use the handle shaft to ensure the brewing unit is in the lock position. Attach the lever bearing block assembly with the coupling and fixing rubber to the top housing using the 3 mm Allen hex wrench with the three screws that hold it into place. Place the O-ring seal over the bearing block assembly. When assembling the unit, be sure to insert the lever nut into the bearing block assembly with the tapered surface to the outside. This will ensure that the handle support fits properly over the bearing block and O-ring. Reinstall the plastic chrome handle support and the handle arm spacer. Next, place the plastic insulation ring on the chrome handle support. Then, using the 5mm Allen hex wrench, reattach the handle knob and handle arm with the shaft screw and washers through the insulation ring and tighten to the lever nut.
Install the plastic chrome lever cap onto the handle knob by snapping it back into place. Now, you can reinstall the chassis back cover and power cord. Route the flow meter cable through the channel in the chassis. Secure the ground wire harness to the top housing using the T20 Torx screwdriver with the screw and star washer. Plug the short ground wire lead into the thermoblock ground tab. Route the longer end of the ground wire up through the cable guide channel in the chassis. Route the cord wires through the channel in the chassis. Plug the green power cord ground wire into the ground terminal connector. Plug the power cord wires back into the main control unit circuit board. Please note that European units have different color wires. Plug in the green and yellow ground wire first, followed by the blue and brown power wires. Reattach the chassis back cover by snapping the tabs back into place. Then secure the chassis back cover with the two screws using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Next, you can reattach the metal base. Make sure the magnetic disc in the pocket at the rear of the slider channel on the base is in its proper place. You may have to use double-sided tape to keep it in place in the pocket as you invert the metal base for assembly. Work the power cord back into the opening. Reattach the four screws securing the metal base to the metal side panels using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Then, reattach the seven black screws securing the metal base to the plastic chassis using the T10 Torx screwdriver. Finally, attach the ground screw with star washer from the base using the T20 Torx screwdriver. To complete reassembly, reattach the base cover and water tank support. Start by using the two screws to attach the tank support to the metal base. Reattach the flow meter PCB assembly to the tank support. First, plug in the flat ribbon cable, and then, while routing the cable under the flow meter PCB, Carefully snap the PCB in place on the hooks that secure it to the tank support. Route the flow meter ribbon cable through the cable guides. Now, attach the clear rubber pump tube to the flow meter output. Route the black tube into the channel on the low pressure connector. Place the low pressure connector into place on the tank support using the T10 Torx screwdriver to reattach the two screws removed in disassembly. Attach the black rubber tube to the flow meter input fitting. Route the cord through the cord hold channel and out through the cord opening at the rear of the tank support. For European units, the power cord loops around the cord channels as shown before coming out the opening. Screw the cord strain relief to the water tank using the T10 Torx screwdriver. Now you can reattach the base cover. Reattach the four base cover screws using the T20 Torx screwdriver. Wind the cord around the cord wrap in the base cover and install the cord hold down with its new screw using the T10 Torx screwdriver.
Set the unit upright on the workbench and install the water tank on the rear of the unit. Now, you can reassemble the maintenance unit. If the hinge locks fell out of the cup support during disassembly, be sure they are installed properly into the cup support arms when replacing them. The hinge lock slats are flat on one side and rounded on the other. The hinge locks get installed so that the tapered lock end is out and the dimple is toward the set screw. Put the cup support into place on the maintenance unit and tighten the set screws to secure it in place. Now replace the plastic drip tray, making sure it is fitted to the two tabs on the maintenance unit base and snap it into place. Place the drip grid and capsule container onto the maintenance unit and into place on the front of the machine. Assembly is now complete. Wipe the unit with a clean rag so the unit can look its best. Problem. Paint damage. Solution. Replace affected painted parts. Problem. Maintenance unit will not install. Solution 1. Check if metal plate at rear of drip tray is missing. If so, replace the drip tray. Solution 2. Check to see if the slider is blocked. Remove blockage or empty capsule container. Problem. Capsule not ejecting properly. Solution. Replace defective capsule cage or brewing unit housing assembly. Problem. Dead unit. No lights. Solution 1. Verify unit is plugged in and check breaker box to ensure power source. Solution 2. Replace power cord. Problem. Unit does not brew even though the lights are on and no error is showing. Solution 1. Verify tank is filled with water. Solution 2. Descale unit as per use and care guide to clear water path blocked by mineral deposits. Solution 3. Replace water pump. Problem. Brew button backlight and one LED light flashing simultaneously. Solution. Allow unit to warm up for at least 30 seconds before so it can come up to operating temperature. Problem. Two LED lights flashing alternately. Solution. Unplug unit and allow it to cool before retesting for condition. An overheated unit will automatically enter standby or ready state when properly cooled. Problem. Unit leaks. Solution 1. Make sure the single lever is down all the way. Solution 2. Make sure the capsule is positioned correctly. Solution 3. Examine the water tank for cracks or defective tank valve. Replace as needed. Problem. Coffee is not hot. Solution 1. Descale unit as per use and care guide to clear water path blocked by mineral deposits. Solution 2. Replace defective thermal block. Problem. Unit doesn't cool down after use. Solution. Replace defective main control unit electronics.